Mr. Shu, Huawei has been talking about how 5.5G leads the mobile AI era. But what is that? And what role does mobile communications technology play in it? The AI at the very heart this coming two years. Past this year, the AI applications have counted about three million and have already existed for the traditional apps and also for the device operation system like the Huawei Harmony OS and Apple iOS have already released the system level AI capabilities. So a lot of for the apps can be developed on this iOS. And in the second part for the device part, for the mainstream, the chipset like Qualcomm have already released the AI capability for the chipset. So it means for AI phone is coming. It says this year is the AI, AI, year, AI area for 5.5G. And for the network, for the AI is coming have give us the higher requirements for the network capabilities. First is for the, like, uh, the large bandwidth and the high speed, like the high dimension radius needs the high speed. A second is for the AI uh, application like automation driving. This means for the network needs the low latency the capabilities. And third for our 5.5G network also use the AI insight. Like we use the, we said we use coming for the level four, the 5.5G network. It means we use the AI to self-learning and self-optimization to improve the network performance and reduce the maintenance. It makes it more easier and more efficient. What are the breakthroughs that Huawei has achieved in order to maintain the quality of the network connection? For the 5.5G, the network for AI, it means the, the quality for the connections and also for the numbers, massive the connections. And for the low latencies and the large bandwidth with the high speed experience. For, first is for the spectrum. Spectrum is very important. Allow for the all of the world, for the 5G to 5.5G, most of the operators choose the TDD middle band width. It means we can get at least 100 uh, megahertz. And for the U60 and the millimeter wave, also used the TDD frequency. Second is the massive memo. Massive memo is the basic the technology in the 5G to 5.5G. Around the world now, 19% of the later workers choose the massive memo to build the 5G to 5.5G. And then the ERAA, we Huawei says extremely large antenna area is an important technology. Huawei have invented the world first, the ERAA. So for the latter work, we need three the capabilities. First the capability is for the wide, wide the coverage. Wide coverage means use the C-band or U60 for one by one to deploy the site. No need to add more new site. For Huawei's the Meta AU, we can get 3 dB for uplink and downlink uh, the coverage. So it can bring for the operators to save the new site. In IT America, uh, the, the operators, Argentina TA, they used the whole site, a whole network is used the Meta AU. It can save 13% for the new site, but can get achieved the number one for Okla test in Latin America. Uh, for the 5G network. A second is for the deep coverage. So Huawei innovated the industry, the number one, the light, lightest the AU, we call it easy AU. It's reduced for the facility, for the pool. Above the weight, it reduced 75%. And also the power consumption is reduced more than 20. So it's, it's convenient for the operators to large scale to deploy the easy AU. And third, for this uh, MBB forum, we uh, have a new AU we call it the panel AU. It's like the camera 360 degree. So it's, it's suitable for the vertical beam for coverage. We use the first industry, the wide angles. It can be covered for the high buildings, more than 10 floors. What is your perspective on the development of 5G and 5.5G for industrial applications 
And what do operators need to do to monetize those uses? Uh, yes, that's a good question. And now for the traditional the network, when the traffic is, is, uh, is increased, but the income is relatively uh, low increase, so it's a big challenge for the operators. But for the 5.5G is coming, 5.5G networkers can have more capabilities, so it can uh, have the multi dimensions for tariff. Uh, first is uh, like a, uh, for compared with the traditional network, focus on the 2C for the users. For 5.5G can, fo <coughs> can focus on the vertical industry, like so it can have the new virus of the income for the like 5.5G for the private networkers. They have the new come resource. Second is for 5.5G have the capability for the low latency, the higher guarantee experience. So for some uh, like uh, automatic driving for uh, ma manufacturers, so they need a high quality networkers. So the customers can customize for the service, they can charge more for their uh, enterprise. Third is for the 5.5G can have the new applications to the customers, like AI, VR, for the new contents and uh, for the HD videos. So for these new applications and uh, guarantee experience, they can upgrade for a tire for packet. So it's about monetization from new uses. Uh, does that create the need for new best practice amongst operators? Yeah, the new, they can define the, the multi-dimension for the models. Yeah. The new models can, can, they can have the upgrade for the up, up and they have the income more. It's going to be a while before we have 6G networks, but when they do get here, will they need a 6G core or can they run over 5G core? You know, 6G still, the standard is still defined. And now for the 3GPP, the, this capability for 6G capability for the 5.5G have already have, like the low latency and the massive the, the connections have already have. So in Huawei's opinion, our uh, the Huawei CTO, the Dr. Tong Wen, have a content says in the 6G must be have the more valuable for the customers. So in this this content, he thinks the 6G need totally different, like the core and to the uh, run site have a new design to so have a big post generations the technology can support the 6G. Mr. Xu, thanks for speaking to us today.